In this tutorial, I'm going to review SpendMap's import and export utilities. SpendMap comes with about 30 or so built-in imports and exports, including the ability to import and export most of the system's master files, including suppliers, items, account codes, and many others. There's also many transaction interfaces as well, like the ability to export purchase orders, receipts, approved invoices, inventory usages, and so on. Each module has its own interfaces, which you can find in the utility menu group in each module. For today's demo, I'm going to import and export information to and from SpendMap's item master file, which is fairly common when new customers are first setting up the system. But the concepts that I'll be touching on here today also apply to the other 30 or so interfaces in the system as well, not just the item master file. Okay, let's start by exporting some data out of SpendMap, and then in a couple minutes I'll show you how the import utility works. So I'll browse to the item master file export here in the purchasing module. If you've already used the item export utility, you'll see one or more existing export configurations listed here, but today I'm going to start from scratch, so I'll select this button to create a new export configuration. So first things first, I'll give this new export configuration a name, in case I want to export the same information again in the future, and I'll select the type of file that I want to create here. Down here, you can select the fields that you want to export by checking these boxes in the right-hand column, or you can use this button to include all fields in the export. If you'd like to start over, use this button to deselect all the fields in one shot. Note that the order or sequence of the columns in the resulting spreadsheet will be the same as the order that you select the fields here on this screen. If you want to insert a field in between some of the existing fields that you've already selected, that's no problem at all. Here, let's insert the unit of measure field in between the item code and primary description, which have already been selected. So I'll select the field that I want to insert the new field in front of, I'll select the Insert button, and then I'll select the New field, which will take the position of the field that was highlighted in red. Similarly, if I unselect a field, the remaining fields will be reordered automatically. So that's it. You just select the fields that you want to export, and then you click this button to create the export file. If you like, you can filter or limit which items you export. For example, maybe you only want to export items in a certain category, or maybe only items supplied by a certain supplier. I'll select no filter and I'll send all of my items to my spreadsheet. And here's my export file with all the fields that I selected. So now let's go the other direction and import some items into SpendMap. Before I get started, please note that if you're using a demo or evaluation copy of SpendMap, we've included a sample spreadsheet with a few items in it, along with the sample import configuration that matches the spreadsheet, so you can see how the import feature works without setting it up from scratch. Feel free to use your own import file if you prefer, but if you'd like to try our sample file, you can get that in saved reports and files. I'll be using this file for my demo, so let's open it up so you can see what it looks like. As you can see, I've got a dozen or so items here to import, and I'm importing a few fields, including the item or part number, a description of each item, the unit of measure, and the supplier and pricing, which I'll talk about a bit more in a couple minutes. If you'd like to try importing our sample file, just save it somewhere on your computer, like in My Documents or on your desktop, and then you can select the file later when you run the import. So now I'll select the applicable menu option to import items, and here's the sample import configuration that matches the spreadsheet that I just showed you. If you just want to use this import configuration and import the items in the spreadsheet, you would either double click to select the configuration or you can click the select button down here. But I'm going to modify the import configuration to show you what the setup process looks like. Since I've already imported some items using this configuration, SpendMap remembered the last file that I imported. Otherwise, I would just click this button to select a spreadsheet. And just like when exporting data, down here at the bottom of the screen you'll see the fields that we're going to import, but this time we're looking at the columns in my spreadsheet. So this is where you can map the columns in the spreadsheet to the applicable fields in SpendMap. As I click these arrow buttons to scroll through the fields or columns, you can see that this import configuration is already set up to match our sample spreadsheet. I want to show you how to set it up from scratch, so I'll click this button to start over. So all you need to do is scroll through the columns and select the fields in SpendMap where you want the data to end up using this drop list. I'll select the item code for this first column, then I'll move to the next column and I'll put that in SpendMap's primary description field. The next column is the unit of measure, so I'll select that. And now I want to pause for a second to explain a couple of the more advanced features of the import utility. 
First, notice this hyperlink that provides notes or special instructions for each field. For example, if I go into the notes for the unit of measure field, I can see that it's a mandatory field and that the units that you import must already exist in the unit of measure master file in SpinMap before you import your items. Which brings me to this checkbox here, which is currently selected and grayed out, so I can't deselect it. That's because the units of measure must already exist in SpinMap before you import items that reference those units of measure. That's what validate data means. It's comparing what you import in this field to the unit of measure master file in SpinMap to make sure that you only create new items with valid units of measure. For many other fields, you have the option of validating the data or not validating the data, but in the case of the units of measure field, again, the validation is mandatory, which is why I can't uncheck this option for this field. On a related note, if it's possible that some of the mandatory fields are missing for some of the items that you're importing, you can use this field to fill in the blanks. For example, if I enter each into this field for the unit of measure column, SpenMap will use each for any of the items that are missing a unit of measure in the import file. And going one step further, if a column or field is completely missing from the file that you're importing, you can use this button to enter a default value for that field, which will be used for all imported items. So you don't have to add that column or field to your spreadsheet at all. Please note that this is just a time-saving feature. The alternative would be to just add that column to your spreadsheet before importing. Okay, so after mapping the columns in my spreadsheet to the fields in SpenMap, I'll click this button to import my new items. And here's the import previewer, which shows the first row of data in my spreadsheet so I can make sure that all of the fields are mapped properly. And up here at the top of the screen, I can see the number of records that are ready to be imported, as well as the number of records that will not be imported due to errors, like items with missing fields, data that's failing validation, and so on. You can click this button to see the details of any errors, or click continue to only import the good items. And here's my item master file with the items that I just imported. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, all of the concepts that I covered here today apply to importing any information into SpendMap, not just the item master file. But there is one concept that I'd like to mention that is specific to importing items. When importing items that are supplied by multiple suppliers, you may need to import supplier-specific information for the same item multiple times. For example, each supplier will have their own price for the item, their own part number, maybe their own freight charges, and so on. In cases like this, the item needs to exist in the import file multiple times. For example, you can see I have the same item code in here three times with three different suppliers, and each supplier has their own pricing for the item. SpinMap will see that the primary item code is the same, so it will know not to import the item multiple times. Rather, SpinMap will add the item only once with multiple suppliers, and the result will look something like this. So those are the basics of how to import and export information to and from SpinMap. For more details, check out this section of the online help.